I've been using this M3 MacBook Pro for the past month and it's been quite the journey. There are some things that I really like and some regrets about certain aspects of this Mac. So let me tell you all about the M3 MacBook Pro so that you could buy the right one. If you remember my initial review, you know that one of the things I didn't really pay attention to was the new color. Like this is just a color, what's there to talk about? But now I have spent a lot of time with this laptop and the color has been an important part of my experience. I'm a strong fan of silver MacBooks. Silver is more scratch resistant, looks more classy, and fits any room perfectly, unlike midnight or gold. And this space black color is holding on really well. I do like this all black aesthetic. And most importantly, Apple didn't lie about fingerprint resistance. This new anodization process they use really makes the MacBook more resistant to fingerprints and smudges. It's not completely resistant, you can still leave your trace on it, but now it is more difficult than before. And for a laptop that I carry around all the time, this is really important. The sad thing is that this black isn't all that black. Under certain light, it can look almost like space gray, which is my least favorite color. I want it darker. However, if you're not as picky as I am, you're gonna be fine with this color. But I still think that in terms of scratches, the silver model will be better. Mine is almost in perfect condition, but mostly because this past month I haven't been connecting that many accessories to it on a daily basis. Usually it was one SD card and one hub, so I managed to dodge most of the scratches. Now let's take a quick pause and talk about this video sponsor, Obsbot. Obsbot is making probably the coolest webcam on the market, Tiny2. Thanks to its huge 1 over 1.5 inch CMOS sensor, this camera can comfortably record 4K video with great colors and detail. It has auto tracking and auto zoom that keeps me in focus and in the middle of the shot at all times. I can control it with hand gestures or voice commands and its autofocus system is super fast, but this is not just a webcam. It can be used for given presentations, it has a special desk and whiteboard mode, it even has a beauty mode that makes faces look better. It's just as good in low light as it is in good lighting. And it just looks super cool. Who wouldn't want such a webcam? It works with Mac and PC, has dual microphones with noise reduction connects via type C. It's a really nice camera to have, especially with all those smart features and added capabilities. This is truly the one webcam to rule them all. I will leave a link in the description for you, so check it out. I don't think we should even talk about the design and port selection at this point. It's the same as the year before it and the year before that. In a way, but Manuel, still. This is a very good design. It's sleek, comfortable, and practical. There is just one thing that I wish Apple had changed and improved upon, keyboard material. I don't know what sort of plastic Apple uses for their keyboards, but they get glossy pretty quickly. This MacBook is just one month old, so at least for another month, I won't see shiny marks on it from constant typing. But from the look and feel of the keyboard, I can say that it has stayed the same as before, which means that if you type a lot, your keyboard is going to get shiny in a few months. For example, take a look at my 16 inch MacBook Pro. Just look at the keyboard. I know this is not something that's gonna change anytime soon, but if you're planning on buying the MacBook, it's always better to know about all such minor things. The whole experience consists of such minor things and small decisions, like hitting the like button. A minor thing for you, but a huge win for us. As for the laptop, I kind of regret buying the base M3 Pro. M3 Pro is a great chip, really fast in all tasks, but this is basically the same configuration as it was since 2021. M1 Pro 14 inch came with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gig SSD as standard. The M2 Pro model did the same and the M3 Pro only added two extra gigabytes of memory. I said many times that 16 gigs or 18 gigs is the perfect amount of RAM for most users. It's enough for all demanding tasks such as video editing, editing photos, programming and so on. And it will still be enough a few years into the future. But I feel like I want my laptop to be more future proof. And in this case, it would make sense to upgrade to 36 gigs of memory, just to be sure. Also, the base M3 Pro chip in terms of day-to-day -day performance is very similar to the base M2 Pro. However, to properly feel like I have a new MacBook, I want either a Max 
maxed out M3 Pro or the base M3 Max. These are not cheap configurations, not gonna lie. And for the absolute majority of people watching this video, such a laptop will be an absolute overkill. But for myself, I don't really see the point in buying the same laptop over and over again. M3 Pro didn't disappoint me in terms of performance, yet I still feel like if I was to spend a couple grand on a MacBook, I'd want slightly more power in my workflow. You know, performance is always a tricky subject. And often I see comments that not everyone buying a MacBook is a programmer or a video editor. And I understand that. So for those of you who just want a MacBook for several tasks like web browsing, watching movies or typing documents, this MacBook Pro will be absolutely phenomenal and lasts you for many years to come. It will give you enough headroom in case you ever want to do something more creative or demanding. Just don't buy the base M3 MacBook Pro, the one that costs $600. It comes only with 8 gigs of RAM, which is definitely not enough. To use that MacBook properly, you would have to spend $200 on a memory upgrade to get yourself 16 gigs. But that will make that MacBook more expensive than the M2 Pro, which comes with 16 gigs as standard and has a more powerful GPU. We actually have a great buying guide about all MacBooks, so be sure to check it out. The sad part about my user experience is that it wasn't all that exciting. Year after year, I do basically the same stuff with my MacBook Pro, and seeing small gradual improvements now is more difficult than ever. Apple's silicon processors are super fast, and even the M1 MacBook Air is still more than relevant now. So with this M3 MacBook Pro, I chose a different path. During the event, Apple said a lot of things about improved GPU efficiency and ray tracing, so I thought that the best way to test it all out would be gaming. As you know, I have PS5, and that is my main gaming station. However, for this month, I mostly played on my MacBook. And you know what? It was a pleasant experience, although not a perfect one. Thanks to the power of Apple Silicon, MacBooks can play modern AAA games without a problem, especially if those games are optimized properly. Resident Evil, for example, is very playable here. Great graphics, high frame rate, support for a PlayStation controller. Sounds awesome, right? And it mostly is. However, sometimes when the scenes get really demanding, the noise from fans becomes quite annoying. That's not a huge issue for me since I mostly use my MacBook with headphones, but still. With more casual and simple games, obviously zero problems. Gaming on the MacBook is a strange topic in itself. On the one hand, Apple does a lot to incentivize developers creating a special game port and toolkit so that everyone could play their favorite games on the MacBook. But on the other hand, all this is not enough. The number of properly optimized games is quite slim and the game port and toolkit takes time to properly set up and doesn't always run as you would expect. We made a video about gaming on MacBooks a while back and it is still very relevant. Click right here to watch it. I also want to touch upon smaller things that were supposed to be different from before but didn't strike me as such. Like that higher brightness. There definitely are some people who would notice that extra 100 nits of SDR brightness but I am definitely not one of them. When using this MacBook indoors the difference doesn't matter and when used outdoors the absolute maximum brightness here is the same as before. So for me, personally, the display stayed exactly the same. And so did the battery life. Before you say anything, Apple didn't advertise any improvement in battery life. However, from a 3 nanometer processor, we kind of expected slightly better efficiency. And in my workflow, I didn't really notice that, which basically means that the battery life is still super good. I feel like this MacBook Pro, once again, isn't for people who already own Apple Silicon MacBook Pros. It's for two types of people. One, owners of MacBook Air with Apple Silicon who need more power. And second, owners of Intel-based MacBooks. Apple says that the transition to Apple Silicon is complete, but from what I see, there still are many people who haven't upgraded their Intel MacBooks. And that is the target audience for this MacBook. Owners of M2 Pro and M1 Pro machines will not notice that much difference, but everyone who owns an Intel MacBook will get a really impressive boost. So if you own an M1 Pro or M2 Pro MacBook Pro, 
I don't think that you should consider upgrading unless you really need more power. Because if that's the case, the base M3 Pro machine is definitely not the one to choose. If you need more than your M1 Pro or M2 Pro can give you, you should go only for M3 Max and nothing else. For everyone else, the M3 Pro MacBook Pro will be a great buy. And if you don't want to make a mistake while buying your new MacBook, don't forget to watch our video where we go over popular MacBook buying mistakes and how to avoid them. Cheers.